Hello ladies, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and you have no idea who I am, my name is Chanel. I run a blog called ChanelFiles.com and over here in this very small corner of the YouTube world, we talk about God, fashion, luxury fashion. We do some vlogging. We like to work out. We like to eat healthy. We take care of our skin. And last but certainly not least, we live a blessed life. So if any of those things are of interest to you, then I would love if you would consider hitting subscribe down below. As you guys see from the title of today's video, we are going to be talking about six luxury designer items that I will not be buying in 2021. I've seen this video go around on YouTube a couple of times and I just thought I would make it a fun video and add my two cents on what luxury items I will not be purchasing this year. Now, before we get into this, let me just say, obviously, this is my opinion. This is subjective. If you have these items or if you want these items, please get the item. Um, again, this is just fun and me giving my two cents. So please, as I share my thoughts, do not feel any type of way, sis. I'm just expressing how I feel about these items. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. I actually do have my laptop here in front of me. So you're going to be seeing me look down just so obviously I can refer to said items. But as I go through the video, I will insert pictures all over the screen for your viewing purposes. So Let's go ahead and get into this first item, which is actually something that I heavily considered buying last year. And I think this item is absolutely beautiful. I just don't feel like it has a place in my life with my very casual lifestyle. And that is the Loewe Obi belt. This belt is absolutely beautiful. Like I said, um, I will insert pictures here on the screen as I go. This belt is gorgeous, you guys. I, like I said, heavily considered getting this belt last year, but I actually don't have a very good track record with belts. I have just found that whether they were designer belts or just cheap belts, I really don't wear a lot of belts. So I really wanted to get this belt last year, but I actually talked myself out of it because I just don't think I'm going to get my cost per wear out of this belt. However, it is so beautiful. It is super structured. Um, it comes in a ton of different colors and variations and styles and textures. Um, so many of my girls have this belt. Monroe of Fashion Steel NYC, Janae, High Low Lux, Brittany, Pockets and Bows, Amber of Amber Rochelle. So many of my girls have this belt and rock it so beautifully. Um, I just don't think it's something that I personally will get a ton of wear out of. And for a belt that retails between $990 and $1,100, I just, I don't think that I can do it. Now, one of the ways I would style this belt if I were to get this belt um, would be with a blazer. I absolutely love the way that it looks with blazers. I love that the belt is super structured and then there's something about a very structured blazer or even like a button down shirt paired with this belt. It just really works in my opinion. But I have seen this belt worn with dresses, with skirts, with pants, um, literally with everything. So again, if this is your vibe, I say go for it, but personally, I just don't know that I would get my cost per wear out of a belt that again, retails between $990 and $1,100. I know that a lot of girls also tend to wear this backwards and forwards. So that is like a double, I guess, way to wear the belt. But even for those reasons, I just don't know that I could necessarily still pay that much for this belt. Now come 2022, or 2023 um this may pop up in my wardrobe you never know but as of now in 2021 i will not be purchasing the loewe obi belt moving right along to the next few luxury items that i will not be purchasing in 2021 and that is anything gucci north face and gucci balenciaga i don't understand like make it make sense <laughs> I have so many questions about these collaborations or collections, whatever you want to call them. Um, there's not enough time in this video. However, I just don't understand. And here's my thing about it, right? Gucci is a lifelong heritage brand. They don't have to do the most to get attention. It's Gucci. People are going to buy it. People are going to wear it because it's Gucci. Now, I understand that in a very trendy um, I guess society or world that we live in, everyone is just trying to create something new, come up with the freshest thing, the coolest thing. And so I get it. I get this kind of like almost pressure to stay relevant, stay new, but these collaborations, they're just not it. So let's just start off with the Gucci North Face collection, shall we? Um, number one, the Gucci North Face tent, $3,490 before tax. 
like I don't, I don't understand make this make sense am I supposed to actually like IRL go camping with this or is this something that I'm supposed to like set up in my backyard for like a summer camping moment for my kids like I don't I don't understand and for three thousand four hundred and ninety dollars make this make sense also um there is a green puffer jumpsuit situation that's happening in this collection again am i actually supposed to wear this to the snow is it actually properly insulated to wear to the snow if i want it to i just don't understand and and this is my thing if i'm going to go camping i'm not going to gucci to buy a tent I'm gonna go to a camping store. I'm going to go to Target. I'm gonna go to Amazon. I'm gonna go to Big Five. I'm gonna go wherever tents are actually sold. If I want a puff coat, and I say this loosely because obviously so many brands have puff coats, but if I want a puff coat that is actually going to keep me warm, that is actually going to prevent water from touching my body, wherever I may be, I'm gonna to go to North Face. I'm going to go to Patagonia. I'm going to go to the companies to the brands that specialize in these items and that are going to do what it is I'm paying for them to do. I'm not going to Gucci to buy a tent. Again, I, where's the connect? I can't understand it. So for me, she's a no. Um, also, the Balenciaga and Gucci collection. Again, like I, I can't, I don't know if these companies, these houses are having like a midlife crisis, if they're feeling like they're behind, if they can't keep up, so they need to come up with these like collaborations. I don't understand what we're supposed to do with this. What would you like me to do with this information? Um, you're giving me classic Balenciaga hourglass, which we love. We love the hourglass blazer. That is something that to this day, I'm still hunting down the perfect hourglass blazer or coat. So we stand for it. We stand for the Balenciaga piece by itself. We stand for Gucci by itself. I don't need a joining of the two. And not only that, but it's so much. Like literally when I look at this collection, you guys, it's so much. There's so many letters. There's so many colors. There's so many things. It's like sensory overload in a way. And I just... I don't know you guys, I can't make it make sense. You're giving me, again, the Balenciaga hourglass bag, but with the Gucci print. You're giving hourglass blazer in the vintage floral Gucci print, which, pause, we love. Um, there's actually several vintage Gucci items in that floral print that I personally have my eye on that I love. So let me just say, it's not even the floral print, um, but it's just a lot. You're just giving too much. Like we wanna be, we wanna be given the things but you're throwing them at me. I can't even accept them fully because I don't understand what you're giving me. So it's a hard no for me. Um, she tried. She tried to give us something different. She tried to give us something cool. And, you know, a lot of these things, you guys, and I think it's important to keep this in mind. These are items that a lot of collectors buy. And at the end of the day, they're going to sell, which they do. They're sold out. And of course, they're being sold on the resale market for two to three times the price. However, to each his own. There's always going to be something for someone out there and the girls are buying it, they love it. I'm not one of them, but more power to you if you love this collection and even more power to you if you bought something from it because she's just a full no for me. Needless to say, I will not be purchasing anything from the Gucci Balenciaga or Gucci North Face collection. So moving right along, we're going to go over to our sister, our sister friend who needs quite a bit of help right now and she's Louis Vuitton. Um, I don't know if Bay is going through something. I don't know, again, if she's having a midlife crisis. I don't know if it's Corona Lachey that has come and just shook her tables, but she's all over the place. I cannot keep up with what Louis Vuitton is doing. I just can't keep up. Like you're, you're giving classic but then you're trying to keep up with the trends um you know i'm just obviously scrolling down the screen here louis vuitton like gucci is one of those brands that you don't have to do the most you don't have to go out of your way you don't have to come up with these crazy wild collections you're louis vuitton people are going to check for you regardless whatever it may be you're always going to have a customer base because again it's louis vuitton so these collections and these new drops that she's giving 
it just doesn't make sense to me. And I just feel like she's confused. Um, she's trying to keep up, like I said, with the trends. Um, I know specifically, let me go to the page that has the like faux Prada crossbody bag vibe, but it's Louis Vuitton. Again, I just, what are you giving? I can't, I can't keep up with what you're trying to tell me you're doing because you're all over the place. Louis Vuitton, just stick with what you know. And this is not even to say that you can only make speedies and, you know, Alma bags forever. Of course not. But these bags that are trying to be like other brands. And this is also something that I have to remind myself is that brands and designers borrow from each other all the time. It's the name of the game in this industry. So when we see bags that Prada came out with first and then Louis Vuitton does their version of it and then Gucci does a version of it and then, you know, whoever else does a version of it, everybody is going to bite off of somebody at some point. It is the name of the game. So that's not even something that we're arguing. I'm just trying to figure out what you're doing. This is not to say that the bag or the item is not cute, but I just would not pay for it. If you want to send me the bag, sure, absolutely, girl. I will send you my address yesterday. But at this current moment, I'm not going to walk into a Louis Vuitton store and ask for the multi pochette accessoire in Ampron. Although you guys know I did want the multi pochette um, accessoire in the monogram. All of these different variations of it, all of these different colors, all of these different prints. Um, you know, we have the Neverfull now that is in 50 different colors. We have the Speedy Bandelier 22 in Ampron. Um, again, like you're just too much. Stick with what you know. I know I keep saying that, but again, I just wish that the people at the table would just say, you know what? We thought she was giving. And she wasn't. She's actually kind of trash. So why don't we just go back to what our true collection heritage pieces are and just make those fun, make those cool, make those trendy. Now, if you were to say, okay, Chanel, maybe not the latest collection or the latest season, but if you were to walk into Louis Vuitton today, what items that aren't super classic and super just like baseline Louis Vuitton, but aren't super trendy, what items kind of in that middle range would you buy? I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about it. Um, I love their vanities. Obviously that is something that Louis Vuitton has been doing since the beginning of ages. That's never gonna go away. I'm sure you guys know that they are coming out with several different iterations of the vanities. Um, here we have the Ampron in just this beautiful black. Another item that I absolutely love, it's the Petite Sat Plat or the Petite Sock Plat. I don't know, I don't speak French, um, but I think that this is a beautiful bag. I love it in the classic monogram and I actually am not mad at this bag in the Ampron leather. Another bag that is classic Louis Vuitton. Um, I don't know that it's something I would just run to Louis Vuitton and buy, but the Pouchette Matisse. This is a bag that for years people obsessed over this bag. It's a very functional bag. It's simple, it's classic, not mad at it. Also, I love the Petite Mall. This is still a very highly coveted bag from Louis Vuitton. It is super small, it is super structured. This is honestly a mini trunk. Quite literally, it is this big and it is very structured. You cannot stretch this bag. You cannot um, maneuver this bag. It is literally just that. So I'm assuming that the only things that you can fit in this bag are your phone, your wallet, or a mini wallet card case situation and your keys. Other than that, this bag is not going to fit much, but it is a beautiful bag. And if money was no object, maybe I would purchase this bag. Also, the con bag. I love this bag. I actually have this bag in the vintage epi leather version and I absolutely love this bag. So much so that I'm actually considering buying another vintage version of this bag. However, they do have this bag in the inverted, uh, I guess, monogram print, along with, of course, the classic monogram print. So needless to say, there are several Louis Vuitton pieces that again are not super crazy, trendy, and just extra, but aren't super basic, if that makes sense. But since we're talking about new season collection items, I'm just going to give all of it a hard no. She's not for me. If she is for you, sis, wear her, love her, style her. However, I will not be purchasing anything new collection or new season Louis Vuitton. When you're trying to film, stay cute, stay hydrated and not sweat. It's a lot. 
moving right along, we are going to go into one girl who just does not stop the dragging. She is ruthless. She continues to snatch edges. She continues to disrespect us, to be quite honest. And the girls still go up for her. And that is Chanel. Now, several things before I get into it. I'm only going to be talking about new season Chanel bags and why I personally am not going to be buying any new season, new collection Chanel bags. If you wanna talk about one brand and one designer that just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up in price, it's Chanel. And like I said, she's not alone, but she is 100% taking the cake on the list of designers and brands when it comes to these price increases. It's honestly like she's setting the bar and everyone else is following. Nonetheless, like I said, I say this with my chest, I will not anytime soon be walking into Chanel and buying any new collection or new season bags. You guys, it's ridiculous. The price of these new collection bags, for example, this beautiful, very beautiful, mini flat bag with the top handle, $4,300 for a mini bag, $4,300. And I'm in California, tax is 9.75%. So I'm just gonna round up and say 10%. So I'm paying $4,300 plus another $430 for tax. So I'm paying almost, give or take, $5,000. $5,000 for a mini bag. It's a no. And this honestly, talking about Chanel and just all of the different um, components to buying Chanel is to be honest with you, a video in and of itself. We can go down the retail market. We can go down the pre-loved market. We can go down the vintage market. So I'm not even going to go that deep because like I said, that could literally be a video in and of itself. However, we're not walking into the store and paying this much money for a bag. I'm sorry. And yes, it's a beautiful bag. Yes, we go up for it. Yes, it's classic. It's always something that the girls will go up for. You can usually, not always, because I, I feel like people love to say you can get your money back from Chanel. You cannot always get your money back from Chanel bags. And I feel like that needs to be something that we talk about. That is not true. You cannot sell every single Chanel bag that was ever created and get your money back, period. I don't care what anybody says. So yes, we know that it's classic. We know that it's Chanel. We know that it's beautiful. We know that it'll never really go out of style, but I just cannot fathom. I just can't walking into Chanel and paying $6,000, $6,800 before tax for a classic flap, I can't do it, I'm sorry. And just for a moment, can we just park right here and have a conversation about the audacity of these prices, yet the quality is not up to par. The quality has not been up to par with Chanel items for several years. And I can say that as someone that has Chanel and has had Chanel and sold it, the quality has not been up to par. You want me to pay, you're asking me to come in and spend $6,800 before tax, which obviously I don't have to, but let's just say I had to. And you want to give me a bag that is essentially not going to last me 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Because let's be honest, these bags, these newer collection, newer season bags, they're not being made the same. They're not being made the same as the vintage items that you can buy 20, 30, 40 years ago. The quality is not there. The stitching is not there. The hardware is not there. Yet, the prices keep going up. The prices keep going there. And I just cannot make it make sense, you guys. I don't know, maybe you guys can make it make sense. I cannot make it make sense. Hence why I have not, nor for the foreseeable future, will be walking into Chanel buying any new collection or new season bags. Now, this is not to say this is not to say that they do not have beautiful pieces out. So many of their bags are absolutely gorgeous. Trust me when I say, they're tempting. They are very tempting. And this is just obviously me, but if I'm gonna spend $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 on a bag, I'm going to Hermes. And I'm walking out of the store with a Kelly or with a Birkin period. Like I'm not even thinking about going to Chanel. You're wildin'. Like, as my New Yorkers would say, you're bugging. Like, no, it's not happening. 
it's a no for me dog they have some absolutely gorgeous pieces gorgeous bags out right now but am i going to go into the store and say that one please bag her up no and i think also with my personal style i just prefer vintage um again you're going to get the quality you're going to get the craftsmanship and you're going to get something that not everybody has i am not going to go into chanel and pay full price for these new season bags just not going to do it sis but again if you do baby girl more power to you okay ladies so moving along to the next item i feel like i'm not the only person who probably feels this way i just can't make it make sense and i don't want to say it's dumb but this this is a very silly thing in my opinion again this is just me and i'm speaking specifically about the jacques mousse leche keto mini bag not the bigger versions but specifically the mini bag can it fit my tampon? Can this fit my lip gloss? Can this fit my key holder? I don't understand quite literally what I'm, what do you want me to do with this? What would you like me to do with this little thingy? Because that is literally what this is. This reminds me of something you would just like, it's like a thingy. It's a literal thingy that, is it an accessory? Is it a bad charm? Is it a bag? Again, can this hold her tampon? And I actually don't think that it can. I think my tampon literally would be bigger than this bag. Um, it's just silly. Again, I don't wanna say it's dumb because I've seen this bag, I've seen the girls, you know, wear it and style it and carry it. Um, but for $550, Again, it's a no for me, dog. And I'm speaking, again, specifically on the mini version. Now, they do have this bag. Jacques Mousse does come out with this bag in a bigger version. Um, I don't know. Let's see if it's here somewhere. I have like 100 tabs open, you guys. Um, yes, okay, here it is. So Jacques Mousse does come out with this bag or does have this bag in a bigger version. It is still called the Leche Keto bag, but I think this is the Noed or Node. I Again, I, I don't know. Um, and as you can see, this is a much bigger version. Honestly, I'm not mad at this bigger version, you guys. I, I'm not mad at this at all. I think it's way more functional. Is it still a very small bag? Yes, but does this look like it could fit a tampon? Yes, it does. Does this look like it could fit my keys and potentially my phone? It does. So again, I'm not mad at this bag. The issue I have with the mini version is the fact that it does not function. There is no function to the bag. Like literally, it is just a thingy to hold. It's literally just a bag charm. So for me, if I were to get this bag, which I'm not in the market for it, but I don't hate it. If I were to get this bag, it would absolutely first and foremost, have to be in this size. And not only that, but I would have to get it on sale. This is a very trendy bag in my opinion. This is very much so something that knowing me and knowing where I am right now with my luxury purchases and specifically my bag purchases, I don't know that this is something I would have forever and always. However, would I get this bag in a beautiful color or a beautiful texture? Because I have seen this bag in various textures. Would I get that if it was maybe 50% off, 60% off? Sure. I wouldn't be mad at it, again, in this size, but I wouldn't be mad at it. I think it's a cute bag. Again, it's fun. She's trendy. Although I do tend to not allow myself to buy bigger, like price point um, trendier items. I really try to be mindful of what I am buying that is trendy and how much I'm spending on it. But would I pay for this bag 50, 60, 70% off? Absolutely. Why not? Again, it's a fun bag. It comes in a ton of different colors. Um, again, it has the crossbody strap. You can obviously not wear it with the crossbody strap and carry it by the top handle. This is a bag that I would consider a bag. However, for the sake of this video, and talking about the mini version of this, it's a no for me. If you have this bag, again, more power to you. Um, wear it, carry it, <laughs> use it however you can use it. Again, to carry, I don't know, a lip balm and your ID. Um, maybe you guys can change my mind on this bag. But uh, again, it's, it's just a no for me. The Jock Moose Leche Keto Mini Tote is not going to be something I purchase in 2021. 
All right, ladies, and last but not least on the list of items that I will not be purchasing in 2021 um, are a pair of shoes. And I would say that this is probably the latest, biggest, hottest, trendiest designer um, to come out with shoes. And that is by the brand Mac and Mac or Mock and Mock. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. However, these shoes are everywhere and for good reason. They're absolutely beautiful. These are probably one of the trendiest, hottest shoe brands to buy. I think they're slowly and really by slowly, I mean quickly, making their way around Instagram and for good reason. As you guys can see, they are beautiful. They are very sexy. They're very structured. Um, they're very embellished and we love that. I feel like we're having a moment right now with a lot of embellished shoes and I'm not mad about it at all. However, not only do these shoes look extremely uncomfortable, I have heard that they are extremely uncomfortable. First and foremost, the heel on this shoe is 110 millimeters. Now, if you don't know me, I enjoy heels. However, I no longer suffer in the name of fashion. I have done that. We did that in college. We did that when we were younger. This is not a shoe I can walk in. And I will gladly say that. And that is okay with me. I have no desire to wear a shoe that is... I would say four and a quarter inches tall with no platform. Do you know how hard it is to walk in a shoe of this height? And again, it's not even giving you like an Amina Muwadi heel where it's a bigger base. So you have a little bit more support. She's giving you 4.52 inches of a stiletto. It, it, it's not for me, sis. And again, if it's for you, listen, more power to you. Um, so yeah, the heel height, first and foremost, is a no. Secondly, this shoe looks extremely structured. Everything about this shoe looks like it does not give at all. I feel like you could wear this shoe probably until you're black and blue in the face. You can wear it with all the socks to try to stretch it. This does not look like a shoe that is going to mold to your feet. And again, for me, that is a no. Now, it is important to say that they do make other styles of shoes with shorter heel heights. This particular version um, that I'm looking at is 95 millimeters. So I would say that's probably like three and a quarter inches. They also do come in a kitten heel, which I love. Some of the girls don't go up for kitten heels. I love a good kitten heel. I think it's all about the way you style it. So um, it is important to say that they do make shorter heel versions. However, going back to my point about how structured this shoe is, I honestly feel like even the kitten heel would still be uncomfortable simply because the shoe looks very structured in the toe box area. And as someone, um, you guys know I had foot surgery, I cannot sacrifice my feet for the name of fashion. I did that when I was in college. I did that in my you know, younger adult years. It's a no for me. There will always be an alternative version for a shoe that I can find that is going to give me comfort, but also obviously give me style. So as beautiful as these shoes are, as hot and trendy as they are, I personally will not be spending $1,304 on a pair of shoes that are simply just beautiful. If I cannot get my cost per wear out of a shoe, if I cannot low key potentially run in these shoes, if something pops off, babes, I, I can't, I can't make it work. I'm sorry. If you can, please tag me in your photo on Instagram and let me know that you are making this shoe work. But Chanel, she, she can't get with it. Beautiful, yes, but am I gonna be buying them? No. All right, you guys, that is it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Like I said in the beginning, if you have these items or you want these items and you know, I may have clowned them a little bit. Please don't take offense. At the end of the day, I'm just sharing with you guys items that I don't think are realistic for my lifestyle and just giving you guys reasons why I will not be purchasing them. But again, fashion is all about your personal style. It is subjective. So if you have these or you want these, wear them, style them, enjoy them and just do you boo. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, I would love if you would hit the subscribe button down below. And while you are there, of course, be sure to hit the bell notification so you are notified when I upload a new video. If you are not already following me over on the gram, sis, what are you doing? She is creating content. She is trying to give you what it is that you need. And so far, you seem to be enjoying it. So if you are not already following me over on the gram, be sure to do that right now. Also, be sure to check out my blog, chanelfiles.com. And last but certainly not least, stay safe, stay blessed, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.